this is a wealth of findings uh, which by itself should take a workshop and uh, I therefore will limit myself to few comments mostly about <coughs> suggestions for future work. Uh, I uh, will start with the question of causality direction. The authors were careful, justifiably so, to talk about associations and not about causation. But in the conclusions, some attribution of causality is assumed. And so uh, my, my uh, first, I think, self-evident uh, comment would be that it is possible to elicit from the share questionnaire retrospective questions which will tell you whether people were generally before and after retirement satisfied creatures or dissatisfied creatures. And there is a list of questions which we, you could use. They are not ideal, but they would be helpful in concluding causality directions. Uh, I would also say the second the second uh, comment I, I, I would like to suggest is that uh, 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 it is the selectivity question. People who, who are engaged in informal activity can much more easily get into and out of informal activity than they can get into and out of uh, employment. And therefore, if they are not satisfied with informal activities, they'll quit. And you never ask them. Because in your questionnaire, you limited yourself only to those who are engaged, all are happy. Were they not happy, they would have quit. So I, I think that this is a, a problematic point about that. And uh, indeed, if I, if I remember correctly, your your conclusions there were easy, of a kind. Uh, the, uh, the third uh, uh, comment I would like uh, to uh, make is uh, that uh, you should pay much more attention to age and years since retirement which are available from the questionnaire. Uh, that would be for uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I thought I was shouting. <laughs> uh, 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 one is uh, that uh, after a few years, you don't have an option of employment, actually, after five years or so. So this in a sense, comparing the, the, the subjective well-being of retired persons my age, for example, okay, uh, uh, who have who are older in age, uh, would could you conclude that the person employed and unemployed are comparable when the one who is not employed retired? has retired 15 years ago. So the comparison is, I think, would be affected by the distance of work experience. And uh, the, uh, so I, I, I would like to enter that as a factor. Now, age is very important, we, and you pointed it out, as interacting with other personal uh, 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 characteristics like health and others. Why don't you get 
the interactive uh, interactions into your regression. You, I think that would help. Uh, uh, the uh, one one totally impractical comment. It is we are in a period of transition. As was noted several times in this room, uh, 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 retirement uh, is delayed nowadays in contrast to what happened in the 70s and the 80s, right? Some of it is involuntary in that it was legislated by the state. So it is not a choice matter. That alleviates the problem of selectivity. Because what you have now is something which affects the population as a whole. I know it is not a part of this research, but if you want to know, and it is very important because it is uh, 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 now imposed on people, if you want to know whether people are happier or not, or not and most importantly who is happy and who is not, that I will come back to, not an average, Experimenting with before and after changes, changes in legislation could ease the problem of selectivity, of self-selection into general, uh, 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 various positions. Uh, and uh, so I would pay attention to interactions, to years since retirement, and to age groups perhaps non-continuous. I want to uh, 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 say something about the findings. Most of them are not specific to older people. Women participate less and uh, are healthier, etc. Uh, 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 they decline. A low employment of ra uh, rate of women uh, it's decline with rising age, a rise in the employment uh, rate with education. This, these are general phenomena ap applicable also to older ages, but not specific to them. There is one finding that is in contrast to what economists usually find, and I think I know, I can guess the reason. Uh, this is uh, that uh, um, uh, the um, employment is uh, 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 Negatively correlated with uh, 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 negative correlated with income. That poor people were more than uh, well-to-do people. Now that is not the case usually uh, in, in the general population, uh, and much depends on the source of income. And uh, what one finds is that you tend not to participate in the labor force, whatever age, if your income is mostly derived from non-work. And uh, you do participate more if your potential wages are higher. So it, I would think of separating the effects of earned and non-earned income because otherwise people get the impression that uh, uh, the, 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 the poorer you are, the more you work to sustain a standard of living. This is regrettably not so. I mean, poorer people work less. They are more unemployed, they are more in transition between jobs, and they are less healthy. And so uh, I would take their health and I would take the source of income as further correlates. Uh, smaller comments. The frequency distribution of the population in the share sample differs very markedly from the distribution in the labor force service of the same age group. It does. 
uh, uh, the, the uh, percent of men 60 to 64 uh, who, is, uh, who are employed is not 50, as suggested by your study, but 60. The parallel percent of women is 33 and not 21, age uh, 60 to 64. Aggregation of 65, 69 with 70 plus is misleading because there is a drop, a sharp drop, in, in, in labor force participation. A percent of the men employed out of men age 65 to 69 is 32. Oh, so, yeah, uh, and not uh, 12 when you combine them with 70 and up. So, and uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, last moment, minute, literally, is that I, one has to think for future, for continuation of this on the policy relevance of think. Because the question is what do you make out of in, in terms of the existing retirement and in from formal activities in terms of what we can do about it doing all people's lives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, all right. So um, two points. Uh, the first is just a question of clarification about the um, occupational information in the Israeli share um, data set. Um, so are there actually full four-digit ISCO codes for the Israeli sample? All right, by now. So maybe you could explain a bit more um, the rationale behind these six categories and, and then what do you make of the fact that it's not uh, predictive of work status? I found that a bit... Uh, a bit surprising, um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know these levels so well, so, so maybe there's a simple explanation. And the other um, is on the relation between work and, and informal activity. Um, you mentioned in the presentation it was uh, kind of weakly related, um, just on the edge of significance, negatively. So um, this, this I also found a bit puzzling. It's, a, it's, it's not what, what we find in other countries. There's this... Um, um, interesting evidence that, that volunteering seems to pay off in terms of both uh, em employment participation over the uh, life course uh, and, and, and in earnings as well. So um, is this just different in, in, in Israel or what kind of people are these, uh, uh, these, these people that volunteer in, in past, past age 50 in Israel? Uh, I'll be too comfortable if you do it one at a time. Actually, I would like to respond um, so I don't forget. <laughs> so let me start first with, with my, my colleague and mentor, Professor Klinov, who I always learn a great deal from um, at every opportunity, and I think she cut through a lot of our, of our findings and raised a lot of interesting questions. Um, we will sit down and, and look at them again. I think the interactions um, might have been partially a, a – a uh, function of the number of observations that we um, and the number of variables, but we will take um, a look at that. Um, I think perhaps the, the major innovation of this particular study was that we tried to look simultaneously at activity, whether paid activity or informal activity and to try to balance them off and see what really matters. And we drew from this, from activity theory in gerontology, which says that people's well-being is informed by the, or, or is enhanced by the role supports that they receive, which in, in turn enhances their own self-image and then causes them better life satisfaction. And so what we were looking at here is, does it really matter what you're doing, what, uh, um, as long as you're doing kind of thing? And, and that is why you put both of those models in. Um, we also made an assumption. We said that what really matters most is um, what you are most satisfied from. So um, for the small number of people who were doing both formal work and informal activity, we simply took the higher of the satisfaction measures there. 
um, uh, I, um, to, to see that. Um, I want to think again about your selectivity issue, about people being able to opt out of uh, informal activity. Um, it, that's if it's entirely um, selective and by choice. But coming from a school of social work, I know that there's an entire profession that um, is targeted at pushing older people into activity um, and enhancing old, uh, activity so that um, the whole notion of senior centers and uh, uh, formal facilities for older people might put those individuals at least in situations where they are not necessarily able to opt out uh, from, from such things. Um, the uh, work status um, uh, question and the levels of employment. Um, the best person to answer that is Slava, who's not here, because he built from the ISCO coding, the, the six levels, um, simply trying to create a hierarchical uh, 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 ranking um, based upon those to the best of, of, of his uh, judgment. Um, it works in other key areas. So we have a sense that this distribution is uh, valid, um, that it didn't work here in producing uh, a, a correlation with work status could be partly explained, I think, by cohort and historic effects in Israel, um, the kind of um, uh, employment that was available at certain key periods in the state's history and who was involved in them, um, and, and so that might create, and, and then also having it education in as a, a variable in the same analysis sort of factored out some of the things that inform uh, occupation. So um, that may be um, the case. I have a, an entirely layperson question. Uh, I heard from a psychologist uh, over the years that uh, the level of happiness uh, tends to come back to where it was and it depends on the personality and the example that uh, they, should, they always tell is uh, somebody who, whose legs were amputated it, it takes maybe three years or five years and then he goes back to the same happiness that he was before uh, so uh, how, how is that notion related to, to happiness in uh, the old age etc Subjective well-being is an omnibus variable. It includes many different aspects of positive effect and, and t the antithesis, as also the antithesis of negative effect. Um, and it's measured as positive effect, life satisfaction, um, uh, um, happiness, and so forth and so on. I am rather skeptical about happiness per se as a singular variable, what makes people happy. Um, uh, it's enough to cite that um, in general um, uh, surveys in Israel, high in the 80% category of Israelis are happy. Um, I am hard-pressed to explain why. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm not sure as an outcome variable that that is the thing that, that most captures the, the ultimate sense of personal well-being. A validated a depressive symptom scale, which has 12 different symptoms, which each one is identifiable and has been validated, makes me a little closer to the sense that we're getting at something more predictable. But as I said myself, there is overlap between various self-assessments um, of different situations and one's ultimate uh, 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 well-being rankings. There are also cultural variations on this. No matter what you ask uh, across Europe, Danes are happier. Um, and um, they come out much more positive on every possible measure, um, even when you vary all kinds of welfare regime and, and, and other kinds of things. So um, it's something we have to do, and it's something we have to refine and improve. Um, but it's still not uh, uh, foolproof. Yeah, one comment. There are studies of quote unquote subjective well being which distinguish between the short and the long term. But the short term is also a term. Suppose you come back, but five years you are miserable, or in <laughs> seven 
sky. That's important. So these would more, mostly corroborate these studies that uh, you return to a long run plateau, which is what you are. But there is a special interest in, those, in the transition period because it is not a very short period. It might take a few years. Uh, so uh, I, the, the, the date of retirement, which I was referring to, seems to me relevant to the question because after 15 years you can't, you can't identify what you are happy for from the retirement. You have been retired for 15 years. Well, thank you very much. I venture to guess that one of the things that makes us happy here is the food. Uh, we'll go down to eat. Uh, for those of you who don't know the building, we'll go to minus one. The room to the right, Tova, to the, uh, to the right, Seged. So the room to the right, get out of the elevators.